I'll be providing you the introduction of the project we are going to start. Okay, so it's a brick, uh, breakup game. Okay, so what is this game about? So this game is basically about that uh, we'll be making uh, different bricks. Okay, and that bricks will be made in a brick generator class. Okay, and uh, we'll be having another class which will be named as uh, uh, gameplay. Okay, so what will be inside this that uh, uh, first thing will come to brick generator. So inside brick generator, we'll be creating a class in which we'll be uh, making all the bricks. Okay, and with the help of uh, graphics 2D class and the second thing is that we'll be having this gameplay in which uh, we'll be one second yeah in which uh, we'll be organizing our gameplay and uh, it will be like uh, the addition of the paddle or the addition of the of the showing of the score the detection that whether the ball has intersected a particular paddle or not the ball the ball has uh, intersected the right corner left corner the top corner or not okay and then we'll be uh, having our main class, okay, which uh, will uh, having our main class, okay. So inside brick generator, this both of them will be implementing graphics uh, graphics class, which will be used for uh, our purpose of making uh, the representation graphical representation of ball and the rectangle. So hope you understood what will be going on and uh, let's start our project in the next video. Okay. So this is the end of the video to make this beautiful game of Brick Breaker. So what this game is about, let me tell you. We will be having a paddle. You can see it here at a grey color. We will be having a ball of blue color. And uh, there are different bricks. Okay. So whenever a ball hit a brick, that brick gonna disappear and disappearing a brick will give you 5 points. So let's see how it works. So you can see that a pattern is moving. The ball hit the brick and the user gets 15 points. Then once we hit the paddle, the ball changes the direction again. And we need to reach the paddle with the help of arrow keys. So, and once the game is over, it will be showing game over, your score, and press enter to restart. Get that? So, uh, uh, the basic uh, thing which we are using be behind this is that we are working with coordinates, okay? We are uh, working with coordinates and uh, we will be taking the gap between the ball and the paddle and the ball and the bricks. Whenever we see that a brick is that the gap between a ball and a brick is less than the minimum distance which we have mentioned in our program, we will be changing the color of the rectangle, the brick, from yellow to black because uh, it's not able to uh, we cannot identify it in the black screen, all right? And uh, we will be hiding it basically. So and uh, the paddle, it is a type of rectangle used with the graphics 2D class and uh, we'll be just using the arrows keys to move it here and there and whenever the distance between the ball and the paddle is less at that time the ball will deflect the direction okay so hope you understood this very nicely and let's begin by creating the project for this so open eclipse and uh, new new project will be a java project next project name escape find project brick breaker okay let's move to next let's move to finish so we can see that we got a, here it is, yeah, here it is. So 
so let's open this and let's make a new class okay so first thing is that we need three classes first one will be the main class all right was the name of the package so delete okay and inside this new class okay so package name is package name is fine project bridge breaker Okay, and the class name is main. Okay, so it is done here. The source folder and the package name is written there. Okay, mistake is written here. All right, finish. So our main class is created here. Okay, then we need to create uh, two more classes. New class. Uh, one class is for handling game and play. So we'll be naming it as game play. And we have other class, class which will be generating brick for us. All right, brick generator finish. So we have three classes. Okay, okay. So for we'll be beginning from the class of gameplay okay so here will be package name is not written always right. so i'll copy this and i'll mention the package name here and here as well okay so first we start from gameplay Import. We need to import the Java X dot Swing dot Play panel. Okay, so let's import it first. Import Java X dot Swing dot J panel. All right. Now let's move to the game. It will be extending the J panel class. Okay. So just right here extends J panel and there are two interfaces. The first interface is key input and the second is action listener. So we'll be implementing that key listener comma action listener. Then move inside the class. And we'll make a variable private boolean play equals false. Okay, here is play the next thing. Yeah. Okay. So whenever this will be true, the game will be working, and whenever this variable will be false, the game will stop. So private and code default score will be zero. All right. So private int total bricks. So I will be the bricks count as 71. Okay. Next, I will be making an object of timer class 
because uh, timer is something we'll be using in uh, detail as we show you later okay then private int delay is a variable delay which will be eight sorry eight then it will be private int player x equal to three one zero and this is nothing but uh, this is the starting uh, starting position of the slider or you can say uh, pedal okay so once we are done with this now what we need to do we need to uh, declare the position of the ball okay so private int ball position x equals 120 private int ball position y equals 350 so this uh, x and y are coordinates of starting position of the ball okay so once you are done with this we need to uh, make two variables which will contain the direction of the ball okay ball mm, sorry for the typo all right private in ball x direction is equals minus one and uh, private in ball y direction equals minus two okay so we'll be creating an uh, object of the brick generator class which we have not yet uh, which we have, uh, in which we have not in the commands but we have made that class you can see here okay so brick generator map this will be used for making a map of our bricks all right so let's start with the constructor so public game play okay here we'll be making the object assigning it with the new with the help of new keyword generator we will be passing 3 comma 7 this 3 comma 7 is a means uh, 3 uh, 3 row uh, 3 columns and 7 rows okay in uh, the position of our bricks so that all we will see and when we will be creating the brick generator class we will be clear with this so then we will be adding key listener to it with the help of add key listener and this all right we'll be using set focusable to true then set focus traversal key enabled to false okay after this timer equals new timer i will pass delay and object of this one inside this delay means that we will clear the delay delay variable had a delay of 8 second value of 8 second and we'll start the timer here itself okay so we're done with this now we need to create a new function it will be of uh, void type so public void paint 
and for paint we'll be using graphics <coughs> class okay so object of graphics g can side so what this is a graphic g is graphics is used for like whenever you want to draw any type of shape a board or a rectangle a square anything in java then we can he take help of this graphics class and draw any of them okay so let's first deal with the background so i'll do g dot set color color dot don't know why it's not coming okay so color dot black all right next g dot fill red what we're doing it will be setting the color of background to black now i'll fill the uh, rectangle okay so one comma one comma 692 and 592 these are the coordinates i will be passing what's the area my rectangle or the my background will be taking all right so now it will be now we'll be drawing bricks okay so we'll be using map dot draw and uh, gra fix 2d object of g okay now we'll be dealing with borders so g dot set color color dot yellow okay now fill rect the same thing pass the coordinates of how much you wanted i will be passing it 003 and 592 then comma 0 comma 692 comma 3 t1 comma 3 comma 592 okay so i am done with the borders part yep now let's handle the score department g dot set color so this one will be used for showing the score the color i use here okay so i'll be keeping it green we should make it a bit colorful no it should look a bit attractive that's it the next thing is that uh, i need to set the font okay so it will be displaying some content right so content always need a font so new font you can give it any font i can i, I like sans serif so i'll be putting it okay so sans serif comma font dot bold comma 25 so we'll this and g dot draw a string it will be writing the string it means it will be writing what the score was okay draw a string means just the writing the string okay write any particular string so the space attached writing score okay and the position will be 30 comma 30 all right so now we'll be adding our paddle okay so let's keep the color g dot set color so 
let's keep it uh, dark gray <coughs> color dot sorry uh, dark underscore gray we'll be filling it for the dimensions of it will be passing that so clear x it was the starting position 550 100 and 8 all right so then with the paddle part now it's for the ball g dot set color it's simply the same thing again and again we'll be using set the color first so color will be color dot blue so once you set the color define its dimension see here we'll not use direct okay because the ball is of oval shape so we'll be using oval in the basket ball position x ball position y put it by 20 20 okay so we are doing the ball also now we need to check about the bricks condition okay then we need to uh, remove our bricks and it means when the game is over and all means the background details i'll be explaining how we are doing what we are doing so first thing we'll be checking is if break the total bricks is less than equal to zero like if a user has uh, uh, broken all the bricks means the user has one okay so we need to stop the game so i'll make this variable of play which was uh, defined earlier as false okay and ball x direction equals zero ball y direction equals equals zero so that if you want to restart then user can restart the game and it will be from the default positions set color color dot red okay then g dot set font you must be wondering that it's coming in plain text it's because i have not imported the class yet okay so once i import the classes it will be all fine so don't worry for that you just and try to understand the logic okay so here i did was i set the font to sans serif and the font will be bold and its uh, size will be 30 okay so now i need to draw the string draw the string means write a string okay. so draw a string function and we'll be passing the value u1 all right comma 260 the position where it will be showing 300 so just copy it control c paste it all right decrease the size change the bit of position to 50 and to 30 and right press enter to restart all right so we are done with our bricks part also now we need to check the position of the ball that when we need to change the direction of the ball and when the bricks will be disappearing and all okay so if ball position y is greater than 570 okay ball position y yeah okay 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 yeah here it is ball position y then 570 then what we need to do we need to make it play equals false okay and ball x direction equals zero ball y direction equals zero again just paste the copied text and uh, color it was red uh, color 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 green color all right 
to first set the color equals red let's copy this line control c control v okay color is red font is 730 font is bold 30 and here you write oops slash n uh game over comma your score is equals plus score variable okay and define the position as hundred and three hundred all right so again we need to display this one okay like uh, press enter to restart so just copy this control c and paste it here new font sansari font bold 20 and press enter to restart so once you're done with this call this pose function and end it up here so we are done with this now we need to override a function action performed okay override so Lick void the name of the class uh, function is action performed so we are not going to change it it will be same because we are writing a function and we will passing action event e inside this all right so here first we will be starting the timer so timer dot start now we will be saying if the value of variable play is true so first thing is we will detect if ball is touching left or right or paddle okay so if new rectangle will passing the ball position uh, x comma ball position y and 20 comma 20 not 200 sorry 20 dot intercept with the help of intercept function we will be seeing that uh, the collision okay collision of the both new rectangle player x comma 550 comma 100 comma 8 okay so this is done if this happens then what we'll be doing we'll be making the ball y direction equals minus ball by action okay now what we need to do is we need to run a loop for creating the bricks so out of then will come out of if for it i equals zero then i is less than map dot map dot length it's a nesting type okay so we'll be using map twice length of oh, yeah, i plus plus so after that we'll be applying the second loop for int j equals zero then uh, j is less than map dot map we are matching the four with the first content okay the first row itself so this one if it is the case then int uh, break x equals j into 
map dot brick width. This brick width is a variable which just shows the uh, which shows that what's the width of our brick. Okay, it will be declared in the big generator class, so don't worry for that. Just understand that what's the use of this variable. Second is brick y equals i into mm, map dot brick height. Okay, so height will be saying what's the height of our brick, and we'll be adding 50. So then with this, then now we'll be declaring this variable int. brick width is equal to map dot brick width okay we're just storing the variable uh, the uh, value of uh, the variable of brick width inside the brick generator class to the value of the brick width variable inside this gameplay class okay so second is uh, brick height which equals map dot brick h e i g h t height all right so we are done with this yep now we need to create a new rectangle class uh, rectangle rect equals new rectangle Brick x, comma, brick y, comma, brick width, comma, brick height. Okay. So once we are done with this, we need to create an uh, rectangle ball rect. Another object which will be named as uh, ball rect equals new rectangle ball position x comma ball position y comma 20 followed by 20 okay so then we need to get a third panel object of rectangle class rectangle break Rect equals rect the above rect okay so once we are done with this uh, first we'll be checking a condition that if ball dot sorry ball rect dot intersects brick rect so if a ball hits the brick okay this sentence basically says that if a ball hits a brick then map dot set brick value with 0 comma i comma j the i and j all these are loop variables okay so so once you hit a brick what we'll be doing we will be giving you five scores okay so uh, once you are done with this then we'll be checking for if inside this only nested okay if uh, ball position x plus 19 is less than equals brick rect the object we created a brick rect dot x okay or the second option is ball position y plus one is greater than equals to brick rect dot x plus brick rect dot x plus brick rect dot width okay
so here it is how oh, this two brackets came parenthesis so remove one yeah so if this happens then we'll be changing the ball x direction to minus so ball x direction so and it doesn't and if this doesn't happens then ball y direction equals minus they will be uh, reversing the direction of the ball okay nothing much but uh, if uh, the ball hits the brick and if the position is less than 19 then the uh, ball will reverse the direction it will come down it stops the ball from going up okay so hope you understood what i said now what we are doing will be break a and what is a a is uh, nothing but a is just the label okay this label is from yeah for the loop okay hope you know what label is in java okay so once you are done here then we will be closing the classes so one two three okay after this we'll be back so or coming out of the loop inside the if okay no, sorry outside the if this if statement what will be doing ball position x plus equals ball x direction ball position y plus equals ball y direction okay if ball position x is uh, less than equal to 0 okay ball x direction is equals to minus ball x direction this will be checking for left border okay so after this if ball position y is less than 0 ball y direction equals minus ball y direction and this uh, will be checking for top border okay and third is if ball position x is greater than 670 then ball x direction equals minus ball x so if any of this uh, condition is true then the ball direction will be reversed okay from it will be going from down to up that will come from up to down or down okay so if for right and if it is going for left then it will be coming to right after this conditions are true okay so come down and here we will call it in repaint function that is call the paint method again and again to uh, Let's start all this. So once one, once we are done till here, we need to okay, yeah. So something mistake i think i have spelled to the brackets so break here i think it's one extra bracket is closed here okay so yeah now what we'll be doing we need to override uh, the sum of the functions so just uh, right here override is over the notation okay it will let our uh, 
JVM know what we are going in, what we are going to do. So public void key typed, okay, and key event is e v e n t event e, okay. So just uh, declare it. Similarly, we will be waiting for key pressed. So just copy it. Control V, Control V. So just key tab will be changed to key press, which key we pressed, and here when we release the key. LEA SDT. Okay. So inside the key release, we will be writing some of the codes. Okay, so if e dot get key code function it is okay that if we get a key which we press was right key okay so key event dot vk underscore uh, right this basically checks that if we have pressed the right key then First thing is that we don't need to go to out of the panel, so we will stop it from going out of the panel. Don't go out of panel. Okay. So how we will stop it? We will be putting if condition. If first thing we'll check if clear x is greater than equal 600. The side of the screen. If we go out of the screen, okay, then player x is equal to player x is equals 600 you can't move out of the screen else move right so i will move right to the function which will be created okay so we are done with this so we will see that if we press the left key the same thing we will be doing for left key control c Instead of right, we will use here left. Instead of 600, we will be using here uh, less than 10. So, player x is equals 10. Else, here we will move left. Okay. So, what we need to check that if the key entered was, the key pressed was, enter key okay so if uh, key press will be entered then we need to restart the game as i said earlier also so control c here and instead of left just write enter okay and the first thing is that play should be false then only because if in the middle you will play uh, press enter then it's useless okay because it will restart the game so if it's false now go above and uh, take this that ball position yeah here it is ball x direction is this x direction no 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 not this one Okay, this one. So I need to retype it because I have written this. I have declared it here. Okay, so I need to retype it. So first thing we will do is play true. Then second thing is ball position x will be set to default 120. Then ball position y will be set to default 350. Okay, so ball x direction will be minus 1, ball y direction equals minus 2, then player x paddle will be starting at uh, the 310 pixel, the score becomes 0, total breaks are created again and 
number of bricks are 21 create the map again so map is equal to new brick generator 3 comma 7 all right so repaint it again and again until the task is done completely so what is left with us that we have to write the move left and move right function all right so public void move right okay so play equals to and we just need to increase the player x position okay so plus equals 20 that's all nothing much copy this code same way we need to do for move left uh, left and uh, play equals to true and here will be just instead of adding we'll be subtracting so that it comes back all right and with the end of this we are done with our gameplay class okay now let's move to a brick generator class where we will be generating bricks okay so first we need to import some packages okay we'll import those later first we need to make some data members so public int map type of array type of not array okay double dimensional so public int a uh, brick width I told you earlier in that class we were using mat dot brick width and that mat dot brick width is the data variable present here okay so then brick one was brick height public int I'm uh, making all this uh, public so that it can be accessed by other classes also okay and uh, now we'll be creating public Brick constructor, okay. Generator and uh, intro and folder. Intro, comma. There I passed 3, 7, you remember? So that 3, 7 will pass from here. So I told you that don't worry for what I'm writing, you just try to understand the logic because later on when I'll be declaring the other functions and the variables, we will be clear with all those things, okay. So just try to grab the logic. So I pass row and column. It was three and seven there. So I will be traversing for the entire row. So this loop I can take it from here. Why to write again and again if we have something already written? So this one is taken, copied, and pasted here. So in ing, and when this happens, then I will be making map i and j2 1 okay so when it is done it will detect that the break is not intersected okay if it is 1 means detect break is not intersected with ball okay so now let's close the loop so break width equals to 540 by column. 540 is the entire area available for the mapping of the brick. Brick uh, height is the height of height of all the bricks which are available to us, which equals uh, 150 by each row. Then uh, the next thing we need to do is that uh, we will be making a draw function. So public void draw and we will be using the object of graphics 2D class. Okay, which will be graphics D. So public void draw graphics 2D. Sorry, this D will be capital here. Yeah, and we will be pass with the object of G. So what we need to do here is that we need to write this 
part of loop again and inside this we'll be checking that if map of i and uh, j is uh, equals greater than equal sorry is greater than equals to zero okay so i set it one but if it's uh, greater than equal to zero then we'll be uh, changing it color to yellow okay so color dot yellow so once we're done with this then we'll be filling the rectangle like we'll be uh, deciding what will be the boundaries of this so j into brick this is dynamically created so we'll be using this formula type of formula okay with plus 80 comma i into brick height plus 50 comma brick width and brick width and brick height respectively okay so once you are done with this we need to uh, call the set stroke function for setting the stroke new basic stroke s-t-r-o-k-e pass 3 then with this then set the color of the particular brick to black so that it seems that the uh, brick has disappeared okay so after this just copy paste above line inside g dot draw rect okay so this one this is copied here control c and it is pasted here so we are halfway done with our code all right so now let's close our loop our if gets closed here uh, and this gets closed here okay so The last thing we'll be doing it uh, below here. Public uh, void set brick value. Okay, so we'll be setting the brick value. We'll be passing int parameters the value in row int column okay and inside this we'll put it here row column equals value and we need to import some of the classes here which are import java dot awt dot basic strvk stroke okay stroke control c control v control v the other two classes that we are using is uh, first is kwt dot color and the next one is graphics 2d okay so graphics 2d so we are done with our brick generator class okay so here also we okay so first complete our main function okay it's a very small okay so let's uh, do this in the main function first we need to import 
Java X dot swing dot Jimson. So what is the need of this? Basically, provide us all the features and all the functions which a JFrame class has. Okay, so import Java X dot swing dot J frame. Okay. So main it is. So here let's uh, write public static void main and path string args as the argument so, so now we need to do is create a j frame object which equals new j frame which is a create this just how we create an object in java okay. so we create an object of j frame so then we'll be creating an object of gameplay class. Okay, so gameplay object name can be anything. Sorry, it's the same line. So gameplay uh, gameplay equals new gameplay. Okay, so this is done. Then obj dot set bounds okay we'll send the boundaries which will be 10 comma 10 comma 700 you can keep it according to you i'm giving it according to me all right then we'll be setting its title obj dot set title of find project hyphen brick generator sorry generator then we need to okay the title is to be enclosed in double quotes okay so after this we can resize it so i am keeping it false if you want then you can keep it uh, true no problem so it is false by default so we are making it visible so set visible as true then uh, obj dot uh, set default uh, default close operation this is used that if we clicked on the close option then it will end up this okay so it will be exit on close so obj dot add gameplay so we are done with the main class okay control save it now let's move to our gameplay class okay so here we need to import some of the functions so functions not class import java dot awt dot color okay so control c and many classes are there so i'll first paste it a number of times okay i think this much is enough or you can change it later on so the second was we were using font the third one we were using was uh, graphics followed by graphics 2d so graphics and graphics 2d both are uh, different classes okay one used for creating a two dimension objects or diagrams and one is used for creating one dimension okay so rectangle then action event okay so action event then second is key event then we have one was we had key listener so are all done let me check once mm, yes okay. 
okay anywhere else we use a class yeah yeah this timer okay so timer class inside it is inside uh, java x dot swing so not awt we're using the import uh, java x sorry yeah java x dot swing dot timer so this way we imported the timer class also so i think all the things are imported key when timer and all yeah so let's control c uh okay our code is ready so let's run and let's test this first i need to close this code which was obtained by default close window okay so let's run and yeah you can see here that yeah our game is ready you can start playing it and uh, the scores are visible on the website and uh, the ball also deviates its position with the help of ball is equal to minus x direction that direction will be changed okay so this way we are done with the project of big generator thank you and hope you like the video if you have any doubts then you can ask me in the comment section i will provide the entire code there itself bye bye